Your grandparents will tell you of a time when doctors made house calls. Yes, doctors used to come to your house. They'd have a little bag, they'd open it up, and they'd only have panadas or something, but they'd make you feel better. These days, you've got to make your own way to the doctor, drag yourself there, spreading germs all over the place. But maybe it's back to the house call once again. Certainly using technology, it becomes possible. The aid of applications. It's the patients that actually make the calls and connect to the doctors. This is The Money Makers. I'm Bruce Whitfield. I'm chatting to Dion Kotze, who is the Research and Development Manager for Discovery Health, about the new video call consultation app. It went live in June, and what are we going to see as a result of the phenomenon of virtual consultations and the opportunities they represent? For years, we've spoken about this concept of doctors being able to be in remote parts of the world and doing brain surgery even though they're a dentist uh, because there's a brain surgeon sitting at the best medical facility in New York sure. talking them through the procedure. Sure. This is kind of that sort of thinking, isn't it? It's, it is, but it's actually coming a bit more back to the roots of primary, to the roots of primary care in our, in our opinion. And I certainly I think the applications that we've seen worldwide for video call consultations, virtual care as it's called in the US, is more back to kind of like solving for this problem of fragmentation at the, at the, at the source, at the source of, of primary care. Um, the, re the thinking being that if a doctor doesn't intervene at the start of an episode of care and it's allowed to kind of progress to a point where specialist intervention is required a lot of the damage has already been done and mm. then you're in a situation where kind of face-to-face -face care and tertiary care is an it's an absolute requirement, but if you can bring it back to the source of care, the, um, then I think, in, in our opinion at least, video call consultation solves a lot for that um, fragmentation. Well, you must have some data on it as to what percentage of doctor's visits are pointless. It's for the common cold, it's to get the sick note, because actually, there's nothing wrong with you. You yes. feel dreadful. Yes. There's nothing a doctor can actually do about sure. it. But they go to the doctor to get the medical the sick note, and they go and buy some Carenza Seal, some Med Lemon, just to alleviate symptoms. The only cure is three days bed rest, and off you go and do that. Um, I think I mean you've got to you've got to understand as a as a healthcare funder, <laughs> we're we're obviously not in the business of telling people when they can and can't go to the doctor. Yeah, but you know. But you, you do know. know but you, you of course. Know. But of course we we have we've got a good sense and in, uh, in terms of understanding healthcare utilisation, I guess what we're seeing and probably maybe the bigger concern is that people bypass primary care altogether and go mm -hmm. straight to tertiary care. And uh, I think what we're trying to achieve here is to empower the primary care doctor to a greater extent. The primary care doctor in ordinary language is the GP. The GP, right. exactly, so exactly. Don't that. go to so hospital, go to your GP. Go don't to go your to your GP, <laughs> phone your GP. Exactly, exactly. And it also solves for a lot of the convenience issues that we, that we have today. People avoid going to the doctor simply because they can't get the time off work, or people avoid going to the doctor because the doctor's asleep. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, but it's, a, it's the middle of the night. Yeah, we yeah. go into the doctor's waiting room, it's full of germs. There are lots of snivelly children lying about, coughing on the, the Lego that, was <laughs> the, that doesn't get cleaned off enough in the doctor's yes. waiting room. The people have coughed onto the magazine, so you don't want to touch those. Correct. And you don't want to catch whatever is in that doctor's waiting room. So it's quite a nice idea be able to do that video consultation. It's still face-to-face, -face, but just virtually so. Correct, correct, yes. I think the, the, the intention of the virtual call consultation is in no way to replace the face-to-face -face consultation. And in certainly in the South African context, we can't actually replace the face-to-face -face consultation. In fact, in order to have a video call consultation with a doctor, at some point in the previous 12 months, we would have had to see the doctor face-to-face. That's okay, so that is a regulated That's requirement. A regulated requirement. So I can't go exactly. and not see my doctor for six months, get a sore throat, and say, Absolutely. "Doctor, ah, have a look down my throat Correct. and tell me what's what's Correct. going on." So down in, there. The, in the South African context, I mean, in some other jurisdictions around the world, the context is slightly different. But certainly in the South African context, there has to be an established face-to-face -face relationship with the doctor before the doctor can do a virtual consultation, a video call consultation, consultation with you. What we certainly try and do with the video call consultation is to empower the doctor so that they can do as much as they possibly can during the video call consultation. Again, in the South African context, there's certain restrictions as to what you can and can't do during the consultation. Uh, okay, so I'm feeling, I'm, I'm, feeling a bit, I'm, I'm feeling a bit of a temperature, my yes. throat's sore, yeah. nose is ruddy, it could be an allergy, <laughs> uh, maybe I've got a cold, maybe it's man flu, it could yes. be deadly, <laughs> it, it, it could be, it could be devastating. Um, so I'm, 
how would I go about doing it? Do I, I line up my thermometer? I line up my little my little ice cream stick, uh, <laughs> and then I, I dial the doctor because that's what they need to for me to do the, um, the self diagnosis. Well, no, you don't. You wouldn't need the, those necessary. You wouldn't need those necessarily. <coughs> the 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 app that we've developed called My Doctor Online that's linked to the Discovery app um, allows you to pre-record some symptoms. Um, so in other words, at the time where you're actually making the appointment, you can actually, re you can actually record some of the symptoms already. Um, these are done in a, in a fashion where it's almost like a drop-down box. So you can kind of like predefine, we've predefined some symptoms which are likely to occur and people can select those. Um, and then there's some free text available if you want to kind of go into the bit more of a, maybe the gory details okay. as to exactly what's okay. wrong. And you have the ability to upload some photos. So you can take right. a photo and T say... Take, take me through step by step. Sure. I mean Let's go through that. On, on the screen, uh, <laughs> we've, we've got there, there's a phone, there's the Discovery app, we've opened the app. Sure, sure. Okay, we've logged on. Exactly. Right. So if you can imagine, that's kind of like the Discovery app. No, that's, so that's me logging in there, and then once I've logged in, uh, uh, the login part is quite important because I guess a big concern for many people is... The security. Are you who you say you are? Exactly, and mm. the pr and, uh, and I guess the confidentiality. A big part of people's concern about using virtual consultations is exactly how secure is it. Mm -hmm. In other words, how safe is the data that I'm giving here? Um, you know, how you know, how e easily can it be shared? So obviously, it's only once you've logged in and we've identified that you mm. are who you are, which we kind of enable that. Then um, back to the screen. Back being to the, screen. the being the discovery app. Then obviously you arrive in the discovery app and you've got access to your entire product portfolio. In this right. case, you know I. I have a health policy. I'm a member of Vitality. I'm a member of Discovery Insure, and I have a bit of uh, a bit of Diamond investment as well. Just yeah, checking. Is, is that your investment? <laughs> oh, we can be friends. Um, <laughs> not sure. and, and move, moving through, moving through, moving through. So you would select obviously the health piece. Now that, uh, after that, there's a couple of screens which you would fill in, and that would kind of, and firstly involve who's the doctor that you'd like to see. So, but the doctor I've needs to be registered on the other side yes, of this transaction. Yes, exactly. Yes, correct. So, um, in some cases, you would go through, and there would be wouldn't be a single doctor available to you. The reason for that could be twofold. The one is either the doctor that you're seeing hasn't registered to do video call consultations, yeah. so they they no, don't see it as an, a necessary part of their practice. Or the second part is just that I haven't actually seen the doctor in the last 12 months face to face, which means that I'm disqualified from actually doing okay. a virtual consultation with them. In this case, though, there's two lovely doctors, Dr. Melanie Stein, Dr. Jason Curses. They're, they're are they nice? They're, they both are available. And they know me. <laughs> I've exactly. seen them both. Yes. So you have a face to face established relationship from, with them from a okay. healthcare perspective. And this is driven by our data, what we know about your interaction with them. Right. Person. But I've, I've only seen Dr. Curtis. I haven't seen Dr. Stein. They work in the same practice. They have to the same file. Does that count as a face-to-face -face consultation with both of them? In some cases, if Dr. if Dr. Curtis is not available, then you can consent to Dr. Stain then seeing you. Okay. Correct. All yes. Right. So okay. that is possible. So then um, you can book a appointment with Dr. Curtis then through through the app. So Dr. Curtis's availability availability is then shown on mm -hmm. the app. So I think we've got a screen that would kind of that show that. So you've got a direct access to his his diary then. So he would have made available in his in his diary then dates for virtual yeah. consultations, video call consultations in which show what's available, what isn't available, and you've got the option of choosing then an available yeah. an available slot. As part of the appointment process as I mentioned, you can then record, choose to, if you think it's necessary, choose to record some of the symptoms that you have. So could I do something really gross, like take my phone and stick it down my throat and say, Absolutely, look yes. my throat, So you can stick out yeah. your tongue and take a picture of your tongue this, and, the, the and post it on there. The possibilities are endless for look, this. Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> 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 there are endless possibilities, I'm sure. You terrify um, your doctor. Yeah, exactly. Yes. So. <laughs> but you can, you can provide them with some information beforehand. The key part that also enables the doctor in the virtual consultation, this is actually a requirement before we would allow a doctor to register to do video call consultations, is that they use Health ID. So Health ID is an app that we've developed for mm -hmm. doctors. It gives the doctor access to your health record. Okay. Again, with your consent, but it gives the doctor a full history of what we know about your interaction with the healthcare system. So in other words, recorded on there would be any known allergies, your blood type, any recent biometric measurements that we have for you, your blood pressure, glucose levels, etc. If you're on any prescription medication or uh, registered for a chronic illness, so it allows the doctor to. But, but, but see, well, I see a flaw in this, yes. though, and forgive me, but every time I go to the doctor, I say, "Oh, sore throat." Um, the first thing they say is blood pressure, yes. and, and they do the basic check sure. there and then, whether it was last done three months ago, three years ago, it doesn't matter. Aren't we missing a part of the puzzle here when it comes to 
the touch and feel, the clammy paw, the pulse, whatever it might be at that particular moment in time. For the video call consultation. Yeah. Um, yes, certainly. And I think that's why it's so important to understand that the doctor has as much information available at during the video call take, consultation. Take through, okay, so now I've made, I've made so, the appointment. So we've made the appointment. Dr. Curtis now, is available now, and it's nine o'clock and I exactly. make my appointment. So at nine o'clock, quarter to nine, yes. you, would get a, you would get a notification to say that your consultation is going to start in 15 minutes time with Dr. Curtis. Please make sure Exic. that you, you've got access to Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. um, if you, because if you're not using Wi-Fi, obviously you'll be using cellular data and they'll be charged for that. Yeah. So you get a notification to say what's the, what's the requirement then. On, at the designated time, the app then connects both parties. So the doctor would dial in and you would dial in and that connects to mm. via video call then to the doctor. The doctor then can obviously see whatever your camera can see on the other side. In addition, he would have whatever recorded information you did, you go through as part of the appointment process and he's got access to your health record then. Sure. So the doctor then, Dr. Curtis can then proceed to do the consultation. He can say, well, you know, how have you been feeling? What kind of symptoms are you? Maybe can you close up on your, <laughs> on the rash maybe? Yeah. Or can you maybe kind of like show me your, t <laughs> <laughs> show, me your tongue, show me your tongue or, um, you know, what's, what, are, what are the kind of symptoms? And at that point, Dr. Curtis can then recommend what the next steps would be. Something that he cannot do as part of the video call consultation is prescribe. So he cannot script you anything as a result Crucial. of the video yeah. call consultation. He can only do that as part of a face-to-face -face consultation. Okay. So one of, a th one of three things, in my view, would happen. He would either say, keep taking the meds that, you do that you're taking, or if it deteriorates, please come and see me, or please get yourself to the emergency rooms. Okay. Yeah. Now, w what does this take then out of the process? It suddenly does, does it take a consultation, a doctor's consultation, uh, depending on who you go to see? Say, like, call it 400 bucks. Does this become the 200 rand consultation? It does, yes. In fact, it's 250 rand. So okay. it is a reduced <laughs> it, a, yeah. it, is a, it is a reduced rate. I mean, it obviously accounts for the fact that there's, there's less of an interaction in, in, mm. involved there. Um, but we think that the frequency of this will probably overtake at some point the face-to-face -face consultations. It is fascinating just listening to the way in which technology is being used to save costs, which is good for the medical scheme, save time, which is good for you, and ultimately enables the doctor to see more people in a shorter period of time and make some fairly speedy diagnoses and then channel perhaps the complaint better than it gets done at the moment. Dion Kotze, who is the Research and Development Director at Discovery Health, about the discoveries around medical care in the 21st century. More money making tomorrow. Till then, thank you for watching. Bye-bye.